And so there was a turning moment there, which I'm happy to say that I walked into the company one day and the front desk receptionist was sitting there. Her name is Karen. And Karen stops me at the front desk and we had been friendly. We weren't friends. You know, it's the, you know, you see her every day and you say, hello, good morning as you're walking in and out of the door. It was, you know, like that. We weren't close or anything. And I walked in and she stopped me and she said, Jennifer, you used to come in here every day smiling and happy. And now you just seem sad. Is everything okay? And it was that moment <laughs> that like, you know, any good top executive should do. I completely broke down crying at the front desk. And Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. What's up, what's up? I am Wally Carmichael, your founder and host of the Men of Abundance podcast, the Pay It Forward community showing you, proving to you that you can, in fact, live a life of abundance in family, faith, finances, and fitness on your way to having more. And I am super excited to introduce you to our featured guest today because while we are both basically in the same field and the same line of work, I learned so much from her in this conversation and got so much out of it. I'm just excited to share the conversation with you because I am absolutely positive you are going to get something out of it as well, especially when you take my advice and be abundant in your actions today by paying it forward and sharing men of abundance, men of abundance with others. Look, you can do it or not. It's totally up to you. But the fact of the matter is, is when you do share amazing knowledge and amazing information and amazing resources with other people, it always comes back to you. It makes you feel good in the moment. Well, it makes me feel good in the moment. I'll speak for self. But it always comes back to me one way or another. So be abundant in your actions today and pay it forward by sharing men of abundance with everyone you come in contact with and and if you're up to it, go leave a rating and review on iTunes or the whatever podcast player it is that you're using so that men of abundance can be found in the search engines that much better. That way, others that are looking for these amazing conversations to enhance their life and their mindset, they can more easily find it. And I personally greatly appreciate it. So our feature guest today is the owner of Jennifer Don Coaching, and you guessed it, her name is Jennifer Don. And she's the founder of Best Planner Ever. She is a serial entrepreneur who has grown two multi-million dollar businesses, is a successful speaker and author. She serves high achieving entrepreneurs through private coaching and hands-on workshops. Jennifer is a master at setting and achieving goals, problem solving, profitability, and cash flow. Men of Abundance, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Jennifer Dawn. Jennifer, welcome to Men of Abundance. How are you doing today? I'm super good. It's so great to be here. It is wonderful. Absolutely beautiful. I like to start out with an attitude of gratitude. What do you have to be grateful for today? Oh my gosh, you're going to laugh, Wally. So what I'm most grateful for today is fresh green juice. Mm. <laughs> Me and my husband, of all things, <laughs> um, we just finished a 24-day green juice uh, cleanse, reboot, whatever you want to call it. And I got to tell you, the health and the vitality that has come from that, I am just overflowing with grat gratitude. It sounds crazy, but I'm just like, that's what I'm most grateful for today is like fresh, raw green juice. And you are glowing. You look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's the juice. It is. It is. Hey, I've done those before. I'm well overdue. My wife and I both are well overdue. Yeah. Those. I've done the 21 day or 22 day um, completely vegan. Mm -hmm. I'm a carnivore. I love my meat. I yep. admit it. And I, you know, but I have to say, I also recognize the fact that meat is terrible for our body. Right. And you know, a, a vegan diet is so freaking amazing. I just felt amazing. Uh, yep. And a big old steak. <laughs> no, that's it. That's it. And my husband, he really misses the meat too. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if the female body is just different. Like I don't crave meat. I don't want the meat. Um, I'm good, but he, he does still like, you know, he loves his meat, but he can't deny how good it has felt to do 
all juices. Um, we've thrown some raw food in there and it's just been like, it's, it's life changing. It really is. It sounds silly to say it, but you just start getting health and vitality and energy. And, um, you know, one of the reasons I did it was I realized to get through my day, if I wanted to be with my family and serve my clients and have some time for myself, like I needed energy and I just wasn't having the energy. And so we started doing this juice cleanse and it has been amazing. And so, every day I'm just like, thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been so, such a gift, such a gift for us both. Yeah, you know, and I, I just have to say it's so, it's one of those things that it's, you're familiar with the reticular activating system? Mm -hmm. Okay, the RAS, I talk about this guys all the time, you know, I've heard it, you've heard it before, but this has been front of mind because just yesterday my wife and I had a conversation because I've been really, I like my naps. Uh-huh love my naps and I'm fully retired now and I can, you know, work a little bit and then nap. And, you know, I've got some pain that I deal with throughout the day and stuff like that that really drains me. Mm -hmm. But for about, I don't know, seven or eight years, I drink a energy. It's not an energy drink. It's a, it's a meal replacement drink. It's, you know, mm -hmm. made by Beachbody, this Shakeology stuff. Mm -hmm. And I started it for many reasons. I'm not going to get into all that. The bottom line is this. I quit drinking this stuff for quite a while, for several months, and I've been just lethargic, lethargic, and I didn't really think nothing of it, really, honestly. I started drinking it again about four or five days ago, and I, I hadn't taken a nap in like three days, mm, and I told my wife, I was like, you know, and also, not just that, one of my favorite snacks is quesadillas. And I'll eat like oh. two quesadillas a day. She needs yeah. a tortilla. Oh my god! And uh -huh. it's just terrible. I, it just—I know—it just weighs me down. After I eat one, I need to take a nap. So I also cut out alcohol, um, mm -hmm. just because I'm in Lent, you know, at time frame yeah. right now, and I cut out alcohol and this other stuff, and my energy is just through the roof, yeah. as compared to it was two weeks ago, a week ago, you know. Right. So just what we feed our bodies. We're going to talk about what we feed our mind today as well. But what we feed our body is so, so important when it comes to our vitality, our energy, our thought process, you know, just the energy that we have throughout the day and the whole bit. It, it plays a huge role. And many times when I see somebody who's just not doing well, one of the things I look at, even in business, is their diet. Because mm -hmm. business owners are too busy to take care of themselves. That's right. And That's right. They, it's so backwards, right? Yeah, it is. But you're absolutely right. Like, if we want to run businesses and have families and have these full lives, we need energy to do it. And if we don't have the energy, then all we're doing is just like grinding ourselves into the ground and running ourselves into the ground. And it's just a terrible place to be. And then everything starts to feel bad. And you're right. If you can just start to get some more nutrition, I I actually have a client I was working with yesterday and I'm like, look, you don't have to change anything. All you have to do is add some nutrition. And if mm -hmm. you can just start there, that's going to give you the energy and the motivation to start making bigger changes. But I find that, boy, if I don't take care of my body, like I am crap for my family, mm -hmm. for my clients. Like I don't show up in a, in the right state that I want to show up, up in. And that that nutrition and that vitality and that energy is just super key to that. Yeah, absolutely. But you're just speaking my language, talking about being yeah. in the right state and the whole bit, man. It's like I'm talking to myself here. Awesome. <laughs> Where are you at in the world? I am in upstate New York, about 100 miles north of New York City. I, I married a man who's a native New Yorker and said, oh, I can't live anywhere but New York. So here we are. And um, originally, I'm actually from Arizona. So what? I'm a... I know I'm a high desert sunshine light girl. And so I'm pretty much always cold <laughs> in New York, but um, we're hoping to get in our Arizona home next year as a second home so that uh, mama has a place to go when she really needs like a, a, a heat and, and sunshine fix. Yeah, absolutely. Where are you at sp from specifically in Arizona? Um, Kingman. So north, uh, north, western Arizona, very close to the Nevada border, about 80 miles from Las Vegas. Yeah, that's where I was originally born and then raised between Kingman and Phoenix in my earlier years. And then when I was 12, our family moved us to Florida. And so I kind of bounced back and forth. But but Arizona is like, that's where that's where I really align with. I feel super good. There's something about the desert that just makes me so happy and just at peace and feels really good. I agree. I'm going to blow your mind. 
So I got close friends that live in Kingman right now. You do? Uh, oh but I grew gosh. up with them. I grew up with these folks in Phoenix, Arizona. I was born and raised in Phoenix. Oh, I left when wow. I was 20 when I joined the military. And I live in Florida, Tampa, Florida now. <laughs> No way. I used to live in Tampa. Yeah. So when we moved to Florida, I lived in Tallahassee. Then I moved to Tampa. Mm -hmm. Later, I moved back to Fort Lauderdale. So I've kind of been all over Florida. But that is crazy. Yeah. Right now, my my goal is actually to get a house in Sedona. That's where just the, the energy there is just off the charts. Like, I get there and I'm like, I don't want to leave. It feels so good. Jennifer, I've been to 23 countries on five continents. And Guys, I'm telling you, Sedona is just pure, unadulterated, right. God-blessed beauty. It's, right. I don't care what anybody says. And you're right, the energy is just crazy. It's through the roof. And matter of fact, this summer uh, in July of all months, just because that's when my kids are, all my kids are available, we're taking a road trip from there. Mm. My, my oldest is driving from Georgia take mm -hmm. here and then we're taking a road trip driving down to arizona and we are going to be visiting sedona and the grand canyon and oh. stuff so oh yeah, that's so fantastic yeah, oh, yeah. Long, so long, fantastic long, absolutely amazing yeah. you know it's, uh, that's why i love having these conversations and so much more so you know i talked a little bit about you before we got started here and that's all professional stuff which is cool mm -hmm. but here on men of abundance we like to get to know the man and the woman behind the abundance so if you would how would you describe yourself well, I would describe myself as a high energy person, uh, no. positive, no, right? Um, positive, quick on my feet. Um, I had done one of those um, leadership assessments. Um, I can't remember the name of the gentleman who ran it, but when I did my my leadership style, it was I'm an inspirational leader. And I'm like, that actually does feel pretty good um, as far as my leadership style is concerned. I'd say I'm capable, I'm confident. Uh, quick on my feet. I'm, you know, and I sometimes when I first start working with new people, the best way I describe myself is, look, I'm not an a-hole to work with. I don't know how a better way to describe it, except, you know, I'm pretty easygoing and fun and we try and just make everything, you know, be good and let it, you know, let it flow. So that would be me. My nickname for those who know me closest is Sunshine. That's uh, Jennifer Sunshine. It's so funny. One of my best friends, she would always call me Jennifer Sunshine. Her family actually thought, that was my name. <laughs> and I'm like, no, my last name is not actually Sunshine, although it's it's Dawn. So Jennifer Dawn is morning and sunshine. So it does kind of align there. But there you go. So sometimes people will call me by my nickname, Jennifer Sunshine. It does fit. It does fit. And although, you know, you're not necessarily an a-hole type of leader, <laughs> no. just so we know what we're talking about, what would you describe as an a-hole type of leader? Well, I, I know my version, but I want to hear yours. Yeah, narcissistic would definitely be probably at the top of that list. Somebody who is really only caring about themselves, nobody else, you know, and everything that goes along with it. Like that to me is just, um, I, I've dealt with some narcissistic people in my life. And to me, that's kind of like the epitome, like that's an a-hole. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I would definitely describe that type of personality. Um, just, you know, doesn't care about anybody, all about themselves, doesn't care who they hurt in the process. There. Yeah, yeah, I totally get that. I mean, having been in the military, people tend to think that every leader in the military is just a big a-hole. Yeah, that's not and true. And the fact of the matter is it's not true. In fact, no. the ones that I've found either, well, I, most of my time is military, but I've worked with a lot of civilians as well that are a-holes. fact of the matter is, they don't know their job. They don't know what yeah. they don't know what they're doing. They ended up they just progressed through the through the ranks, if you will, or into through the corporation based on time, or they somebody knew them, or something of that nature. Uh, not really through their abilities, regardless of how right. they got there. They don't really know how to lead people, leading and managing mm -hmm. these two completely different things, and they don't know their job. So right. they belittle those around them. And, and the, you know, the cursing thing is one thing. That's, you know, you got your Gary Vaynerchuk's out there and you got your different people. That's just part of the vernacular. You got, you know, which is, I think is a great guy, would be a great guy to follow is, um, uh, goodness, what is his name? Just, I just read his book, Can't Hurt Me. Um, David Goggins. Mm. You know, a lot of, a lot of, you know, he's a Navy SEAL. What? Mm -hmm. That's another thing, cursing like a Navy SEAL. I, I, like, I was a neighbor with a guy. I've known a lot of Navy SEALs throughout my career, but um, one of my neighbors in Hawaii lived right across the street from me, swears that he had never – he said maybe two curse words his entire life. 
Uh, oh. And, you know, he does Bible study out there on the beach every Sunday and just an amazing individual. So the the stereotype is not necessarily right. there. But, but, yeah, I mean, it's just important for people to understand that that you have to be stern as a leader, but that doesn't right. mean that you have to be an ass and be, belittle everybody. That's right. That's yeah. right. It's not what it's about at all. At all. At all. In fact, yeah. I didn't, I've never respected those guys that were like that. I would, I would, I would do the work just because it had to be done and I'm going to pull my weight for the team, but I'm not doing it for that individual. Now there's other guys right. that I would just literally jump off a cliff for i'd have parachute on of course but you know yes of course <laughs> I'm not gonna harm myself but you get the point right yeah yeah absolutely yeah, so that's that's real important in business and leadership and you know so one of the things that i want to get into before we really get into what it is you're doing now is mm-hmm. i like to have this conversation about this kick in the gut moment because we all have them And Mm -hmm. we see other people go through them, and some of us are resilient enough as we go through life and as we have more kick-in-the-gut moments, we become more and more resilient. It's a muscle, right? Yeah. So if you would, share with us that kick-in-the-gut moment and really make us feel that. Yeah, absolutely. It's funny because my kick-in-the-gut moment was um, about – six months. <laughs> it wasn't an individual <laughs> moment as they often are. It was more of a, let me kick you in the gut and drag you along the ground for about six months before things are you know, going to start to shift and get better. And it's very interesting because often people, when they first meet me and they're like, oh, Jennifer, and she's happy and da, da, da. Um, but they don't realize that I've had a lot of trauma in my life. I've had a, um, abuse. I've had Um, divorce. I've just had a lot of painful things that have happened to me in my life. And so one particular moment that really stands out is if you were to look at the timeline of my life, there's like this black mark. (laughs) And that's the one piece that I'm going to share with you guys today is kind of that black mark. And I had gone, I'd actually gone into corporate. And so I had my own company for 13 years. I'd grown that business. Um, I bought another business and it actually failed. So within a year, I'd open and close my doors. And because of the failed business, I went from, you know, having a lot of cash to not having any cash, from being debt free to having a lot of debt. And so I had to do something. And so I was at the time I was living in Montana and I took a job in corporate. And I became the software division president for a big $54 million manufacturing firm. And they had bought a software company. They were, they were a manufacturing firm. They didn't know anything about software. And I had done software in my previous business. And so I became their software division president. And I relocated from Montana to South Florida to Fort Lauderdale. So took my children, took my husband, took my horses, <laughs> took all this caravan, and we relocated to South Florida. And for the first year, the job was kind of like my dream job. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so in my element here because I had grown my own software company. So I was kind of everything as the company grew. But when you go into a big corporate environment and they're like, hey, here's your IT department and here's your human resources department. Here's your accounting department. Here's the marketing department. And oh, by the way, you guys have a marketing budget of a million dollars a year. I'm like, holy crap, like whatever has happened, like I am, I'm in a dream and this feels fantastic when you've done all those things yourself. And so of course, um, things with the, with the, with the company went really well. That first year was, like I said, it was like a dream. I'm in my element. I'm loving it. But on the personal side, I'm really, really struggling. I was in a marriage that was in a downward spiral. Spiral. My husband at the time was becoming more and more abusive. Um, it was just, it was really not a good situation. And I had made the decision that I needed to separate and I needed to end it. And when I made that decision, he actually got worse, <laughs> which was kind of hard to, it, it was just awful. It was just awful. And so very, very verbally abusive, um, physically, you know, would, would rip doors off hinges, bust windows, just all sorts of things like along these lines. And that's why it absolutely had to end. So on the personal side, you know, my, my corporate job was going well, but on the personal side, everything was really tanking. And no matter what I did to kind of save this marriage, it just wasn't going to work. And so we separated. It was not a, a pretty or easy thing. So I've got this going on. I'm a horse girl. And so um, one of my horses got very ill. And so I'm nursing this horse. I'm up at, you know, 5 a.m. every day and doing the shots and trying to rehabilitate this horse a month into it. 
my my healthy horse, I woke up and he was colicking, throwing himself on the ground. I'd never seen this. I'd read about it, but I'd never actually had a horse that was so severe, so severely colicking. There was just nothing I could do about it. And I had to put him down later that day. And then within another week or two, my sick horse actually had to be put down as well. So I lost mm. two horses within a 30 day period emotionally just so struggling with this this horrible relationship I'm trying to get out of I've got three children so I'm I'm now stepped into that single mom role and then on the corporate side I discovered some problems in the software. I had hired a developer. He came in, he quit two weeks later. And I knew there was something going on in there, but I'm not a developer and I didn't know enough about code to be able to figure it out. But when the guy gave his notice, I'm like, look, you have to tell me like what's going on. And we figured out that there was a lot of problems and then the core source code of this system. And it was a, a cloud-based system. And so I'm there growing the company and, 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 bringing a lot of new clients on. And so we're putting this load on the system and I'm starting to see just symptoms of something's not right. And so he confirmed, you know, something wasn't right. And it was the weirdest thing because as I sat at my desk and here I am, the president of a software company, it was a, a very male dominated industry. I was the only senior female executive. Um, it was, it was kind of a big deal. I, I really felt like, wow, here I am, you know, in this great position. And I remember sitting at my desk after I had discovered these problems in the software, I went back and I started researching the paperwork from when they had bought the company before I even started. And I found it in the paperwork. I found the, the three or four paragraphs that the owner had just completely overlooked that said, there are some big problems in the database, in the source code that need to be addressed. But in order for the company who did the evaluation to fix it, there was like a $2 million price tag. He didn't want to pay the $2 million, So he just bought the company and ignored it all. And I went back and I found these things. And I remember sitting at my desk and it's like, oh, crap. And what am I going to do? Right. What am I going to do? I knew that the right thing in my heart was I needed to shed some light on this. I needed to bring attention to it. I knew we could fix it. But I just had this moment sitting at my desk where I'm like, I don't know what it was. There was a voice in my head that said, if you tell your career here is over. And I was just like, I have to say something because it's the right thing. And I need to sleep at night and I know who I am. And I did. And I, and I told what was going on and it did, you know, it didn't go over very well. And they wanted somebody to blame. I was the president of the company. So I was the most convenient person to blame. We could have easily fixed it, but they didn't want to fix it. And so they brought in a company to try and fix it. It didn't, of course it didn't work. And basically the next year and a half was just this like spiral downward <laughs> into hell as I watch them just make terrible decisions, not listen to me. Um, you know, this conflict of here's what we need to do to fix this. And it, it, so there was my beautiful dream corporate career that I've just felt like it was just like going down the toilet while emotionally I was so struggling and I'd lost the horses, um, separated. So all these things were going on for about a six month period where it was just like, bam, 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 bam. And after all these things happened, I found myself in what I can best describe as a functional depression. Um, I was just emotionally shot from all of it, trying to do the right thing in all elements of my life and feeling like it was all just completely falling apart no matter what I did. And I had three children, and so I didn't really have the, the luxury of stopping or quitting um, it was probably one of the darkest moments in my life. Thank God I had my children because there were times where I was just like so dark, like I, I would be easier to end it than to keep going. That's how dark it got mm -hmm. for me. And of course, the moment you have that thought, you think about your children, thank God. And it's like, okay, wait, you can't even think that you have to keep going. And I would literally convince myself to go through each day. Like I'd wake up in the morning and it's like, okay, just put your feet on the floor just walk to the bathroom, comb your hair, just literally minute by minute is how I was getting through my days. They were, they were just so bad. I don't know how else to describe it. It was just so bad. And so there was a turning moment there, which I'm happy to say that I walked into the company one day and the front desk receptionist was sitting there. Her name is Karen. And Karen stops me at the front desk and we had been friendly. We weren't friends. You know, it's the, you know, you see her every day and you say, hello, good morning. As you're walking in and out of the door, it was, you know, like that we weren't close or anything. And I walked in and she stopped me and she said, Jennifer, you used to come in here every day, smiling and happy. And now you just seem sad. Is everything okay? 
And it was that moment <laughs> that like, you know, any good top executive should do. I completely broke down crying at the front desk and thank God nobody, <laughs> thank God nobody like came in at that time. Um, it was like a little tiny miracle. Nobody mm. came in to see me just break down. And, you know, if you were, if you're watching the scene, like in a movie, you know, here's this top whoop de doo executive. And, you know, like I had to put on a show. I had played a role. Like, you know, I was this big executive, the only senior female in the whole company. The only other roles that women were filling was at the front desk or in the accounting department. Um, the rest of it was all men. And for me to just kind of like drop that guard, it was a big moment. And I started crying and saying, no, you know what? I'm not okay. And part of what, what really shook me to my core is that the whole time all of this stuff was going on, I really didn't have family or friends in the area because I had relocated. And I, I, nobody over this whole time that this had all been going on, nobody at this company they knew things were going on bad in my marriage. They knew that my soon to be ex was a, not a good person. Like they knew that was going on, but nobody once ever stopped and just said, are you okay? Ever. And so the fact that she cared enough to just ask me if I was okay and had noticed that I wasn't, it meant so much to me. And once I stopped crying, I found out that Karen ran a women's empowerment group in the evening. And I didn't know that this front desk receptionist, this was her passion, was to help empower women. And she invited me to come to a meeting, which normally I would have absolutely said no to. I would have made some excuse and never gone. And this time why I you, said why yes. Why do you feel that is? You know, again, the role. Mm -hmm. I, I figured the role, it was, yeah. But, yeah, you know, the role that you're playing. Mm -hmm. And it's it's like, but at the same time, I didn't know that she did this. Yeah. And that was such an eye opener for me that here's this woman at the front desk who's a receptionist answering phones, and she has a passion to empower women and has a group at night that she's running every Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea. And on her end, she didn't really tell anybody in the office that she was doing this either. Because it, again, the role, it's like she didn't want them to know what she was also doing. So I went to the meeting and by some, again, miracle, nobody showed up that night. And so it ended up just being me and, and her and her, her co-facilitator who were all, was also named Karen. So Jen, Karen and Karen sat there and I basically cried for a couple of hours and they listened. And it was the first time that I was able to get some of these things off my chest. And really that was kind of that turning moment where I started to not be isolating myself. I made the decision that I needed to continue going to this group. I needed to surround myself with people who were positive, who were supportive. Um, and that was really kind of that turning moment where it was like, okay, this isn't working and I need help. And yes, I'm strong and confident and capable and all these things, but it was just too much mm -hmm. for one person to try and handle all that on their own. So there you go. There's my, my big like kick in the gut. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like divine intervention to me. I mean, those those moments when the most unexpected person in your path, in your life, says, you know, a couple words, are you okay? Yeah, are you okay? Are you okay? And that's it. I mean, yeah, I, 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 it just chokes me up just thinking about it because I can imagine the amount of stress and everything. You know, I was thinking when you're talking about you're kicking the gut moment between family and your horses and, and your job, you know, your career, you know, everybody's looking for balance in their life. And I was thinking, you know what, at the time you had balance in your life. It was not the balance you wanted. It was not balanced <laughs> up here. It was balanced way down here. It was way equally jacked up on both ends of the all... <laughs> I know it was equally jacked up everywhere. Yeah. Like everything was crap. There was no question yeah, about that. It's it so funny. Balanced, but um, oh, yeah. you can only stay yeah. in that state for so long. Yeah. Um, and on intervention, I just think it's beautiful that you put yourself into that group or you're invited into the group and you decided to stay with it because ladies and gentlemen, this, this is, I say it over and over again. We just need people in our lives uh, that are not in our normal circles that you, right. you know, hang out in. You just have to get around other people. 
Right. You absolutely do. And it was so interesting. So Karen and I are still friends to this day. And I later found out that it took her weeks to get up the courage to even ask me the question. Like she noticed something was going on, but she was really, she was afraid to even ask me, was I okay? And I'm just, I tell her I'm so grateful because it's one question that changed the course of my life for the better forever. Because if she hadn't asked me that question, I would have continued to go on to suffer. I probably would have never discovered the group. From the group, I ended up meeting a coach that I hired. So when we talk about like, okay, when do you make that decision? Like, okay, I, I really need some extra help with this. It's time to shift out of it. Enough is enough. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to move on. Um, from there, I hired a life coach who really, um, I never hired a life coach before, but it was a life coach that really helped me move through and process a lot of the grief that I was dealing with. Um, I really wanted to get out of corporate. I didn't like that conflict. Um, I was ready to go back out on my own again, but I didn't know what to do. And so she really helped me through that process and helped me figure it out until I finally did. I left corporate and, and went out on my own again. And the funny thing is, is fast forward a couple of years, the coach that I hired actually introduced me to the husband, the great husband that I'm married to today. So when you talk about like things happening, like you don't always know people will come into your life and it can, you know, I hired her to help me through the grief of this horrible abusive marriage that I was getting out of. And she ends up actually down the road invite in introducing me to the husband I'm happily, happily, joyfully married to today. So it's just like, I always look back, I'm like, oh my gosh, what if I, what if Karen hadn't asked me that question? Mm -hmm. um, it, it would have altered the course of my life and I don't even know in what ways. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> That's an amazing coach. Now, did she uh -huh. introduce you for the intent of you two uh, connecting in that way or was well, it just a casual it's, introduction? It's so funny because she says, if you ask her, she's like, sh she just said, God said I needed to make this introduction. And she's not like a super spiritual person, mm -hmm. but she was just like, I don't know what it was, but she's just like, God was like, you got to introduce these two. And he told, she told him she can help you with your Facebook marketing because he's an author. And she's like, she can help you with your Facebook marketing. She told me he's single. And I'm like, I don't care that he's single because I've had enough boys <laughs> and I'm not looking for another boy. Yeah. Um, so that's, she told me he was single. She didn't tell him and she just she just put us together and she kept harassing me like you've got to call him you've got to call him and and then she gave me the wrong number and i call, so i called the wrong number and the voicemail was like a total creeper and i'm like oh you have to be kidding me and i left this voicemail for somebody and a couple of days later he actually called me because she was harassing him too she's like you guys just have to connect i don't know why but you need to connect and we did we connected it was instant um we've been together since that first phone call like it was crazy <laughs> <laughs> crazy how quickly we hit it off and um we've been together ever since Amazing. so so you got a yeah. life coach and how mm -hmm. did this what were some of the questions or some of the things that your life coach really did for you that made a huge impact yeah that's a great question so when i first hired the life coach you have to understand that so i'm i'm a single mom with three children um i was still getting out of debt from the failed business which is why i took the corporate job so yeah i was making really great money but i had a lot of debt that i was paying off supporting the family by myself at the time i was still paying for my home in fort lauderdale and paying for the home in montana so i had a lot of financial stress you know going on at this time as well and so when the life coach, she said to me her fee to work with her for, I think it was 90 days was $900. And I had to the penny $900 in my savings account. And that was it. I didn't have any more. And here I am, I've got children, $900 on my savings account, and I'm barely, you know, living check to check on the rest. And it was at that point that I had to make the decision if really, if I was worth that money. And I decided that I was, and I gave her my $900. And from that moment on, that's when things really started to kind of shift for me because I decided, you know, I, I was my best investment. And some of the things that she took me through when I tell you that some of our calls were literally me sobbing and her listening. Um, it wasn't pretty, people. It was not pretty <laughs> in those earlier days. Um, but I needed that safe space where I could just vent off anything that I was feeling. She had a lot of questions that she took me through that were around grief because I was carrying so much grief of just 
the loss of the marriage, loss of the horses, loss of my job, just loss of so many things in my life. So she took me through a lot of that grief work. She took me through work to um, figure out my my core values, you know, who I am as a person, what's important to me, because I'd never taken time to really define that. Um, we did a lot of work and far as far as, you know, getting out of corporate, like where would I want to go? What would I want to do? And starting to really think about a future when you're so in the day to day of surviving from moment to moment, it's really difficult to start thinking about a future. And so she really helped me kind of shift into a place where I could start to think about the future and could start to believe that there was something better, you know, out there for me than the hell that I had been living. So that's really a lot of that deep work that we did together. Wonderful. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I think that's important because a lot of people being, you know, hiring a coach, I just think is every time that I've achieved anything of great significance in my life, mm-hmm. I've had a coach regardless of what it was, mm-hmm. something in the military, something, you know, my personal life, uh, business, you name it. I've always had a coach. Anytime I try to do anything on my own, it, I may have done okay, but not nearly as well as yeah. I did with a coach. So I think that's extremely important. So how did that transition your career? Because now you're a coach, you're a business coach, I am. and I am. you're a very successful one, I might add as well, and you're doing very well. So how did that all transition? Yeah. So after I stepped out of corporate, I didn't really know what I was going to do. And so I just started doing like taking on cor- um, not corporate uh, marketing clients. I was doing marketing. So I was rewriting copy, helping people with their marketing strategy, just kind of doing that and starting to get a few clients. And it's so funny. One of my first clients was a woman who was an intuitive and she wanted me to help her rewrite the copy on her website. I'm like, okay. And so we're working on the copy on our website one day and she gives me this like impromptu reading on the phone. She's like, Jennifer, I I see you as a business coach. You should immediately rebrand yourself. I see big money in it for you. And I was like, what? A business coach? I'm like, this woman is, she's crazy. I don't even know what she's talking about. I'm like, I couldn't even see myself in that role. I was just like, who wants to be a business coach? Literally, that's what I'm thinking. And so fast forward another couple of years, you know, I I met my husband, we relocated to New York. When I came to New York, I was asked by a women's networking group. Um, It was a national network of women entrepreneurs to come in and lead their accountability and their masterminding circles. And I said, yeah, absolutely. And so I started doing that. Um, While I was there, I tripled their revenues. They made me the president of the company. It was a great experience. And it was there that I realized, I'm like, wait a second, I've grown my own seven-figure business. I I grew a seven-figure business in corporate. So I had experience on both sides. And I was able to take that experience and really use it to help these other women wherever that they were stuck because I understood being stuck in corporate. I understood being stuck as an entrepreneur. Um, I understood these things. And so that's really that experience is what kind of gave me the courage to coach. And so after I, I left that organization, I went out on my own. I was really fortunate to have clients that right from the beginning of the coaching practice. And I've been going strong now for just on my own since 2014. 14. So what is that? Five years now. Mm -hmm. Um, And I do, I have a very healthy coaching practice. And then I've I've started another company, uh, Best Planner Ever, which is a daily planner to help women and some smart men achieve their goals um, much faster and easier. So I look at the career I'm in today and I realize, oh my gosh, it's a perfect fit for who I am, what I do, the experience that I have. So the intuitive, I sh- if I had just listened to her, I would have been a couple of years ahead. But <laughs> I wasn't in a place where I could hear it, which is coaches, we know, like sometimes they're not in a place where they can hear it yet. Mm-hmm. And it's okay, they'll get there. Um, but when you're in that place where you can finally hear what you need to hear, it can really be life changing. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm hard headed in that regard as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I kept trying like, to go oh. down a certain path because of this because of this podcast. Like six months in, people started asking me to coach on living a life of abundance, and I'm like, that's not even in my wheelhouse. I wouldn't know how to how to do that. And then enough people started coming along asking me, so I started trying to go down that road of of t- you know coaching a, an abundance mindset and just mm-hmm. being that you know example. But as I, I have one of the coaches that I hired actually. And then I got actually I hired another coach, and then he introduced me to this other coach. And this coach, uh, Carl Bryan, he's like, Wally, dude, you are a business coach. You have so much information and so much knowledge and so much experience and so much leadership 
mm-hmm. this is the path you got to go. And I'm like, yeah, but I got this. I'm already on this path over here. I'm already right. got every courses set up and everything. He said, yeah, but how's that working? Yeah. <laughs> Who's paying for that? And I said, right. um, business owners and entrepreneurs, hello, dude. He's real straightforward. He's like, just like me, which I love. He's like, dude, yeah, quit it. Do this. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, Good absolutely. Stuff. And and the coaches, man, I'm telling you, it's just such a huge benefit in your life, guys. It, it, it just really is. So yeah. we're at the point where we, oh, I want to talk a little bit, before we get into the pay it forward round a little bit, I want to talk a little bit more about what specifically you do. Who do you serve as a business coach? You know, because I personally like the smaller like mom and pop type businesses. I like the small, uh, small business, the true definition of the small business owners in my area out here that I really like working with, but who specifically do you serve? Yeah. So I generally work with business owners, men and women, a mix of both who have businesses generally somewhere in the half a million to 2 million Mm -hmm. range. Um, I usually don't work with startups, even though it's not that I can't help. Um, It just does generally doesn't seem to be kind of where I fit. I'm generally more of, you know, yeah, we've got a business, you know, we know how to sell our product, but our profitability is terrible. Our cash flow is terrible. We're living check to check. The, The business is draining my life, you know, those kinds of things is where I really, really excel at kind of um, t- flipping it, taking that situation of, you know, we built a business, but it's it's broken in some places and we need help going in and diving deep and fixing it at the source of whatever is broken. So that's that's really where I thrive is is going into going in deep, no band-aids mm-hmm. and fixing what needs to be fixed so that you can have a super profitable business. It's not a huge drain on your time or life. In fact, it should add to your life and you're providing a good high quality product and you're doing it away in a way that, you know, is I, I'm a big fan of ease and flow and joy. Like if I had to describe you know, me and what I do in three words, it would be that we want ease, we want joy, we want flow in all areas of your life. And your business should be a piece of that. That's, that's really my specialty. Otherwise, what's the point, right? What's the point? That's right. right. And that's what a lot of business owners, I find a lot of business owners got started because that's what they had envisioned. But what they Mm -hmm. actually got was not that. So what are you finding that is one of the biggest roadblocks to them having that ease and joy and flow? Yeah, so it's usually one of two things or a combination of two things. One, it's education. It's well, nobody taught me about profitability. They taught me work hard and it'll all work out okay. And that's what I experienced in my first business too. I just worked harder. Mm -hmm. Um, Anytime I had a problem or as my staff grew and I needed to make payroll, I just worked harder. I just stopped paying myself. Like I just, you know, did these things. And in the big picture, it really doesn't work. And so one is definitely going to be the education of, well, here's what profitability is. Here's how to do it. You know, here's marketing strategy. Here are these things that you just need to know about running a healthy business. So one is education, but two, the biggest thing is mindset. And you know this, Mm. it's mindset. And if you wake up every morning and you tell yourself, there's never enough hours in the day, my team are idiots. I'm all Mm. alone. I don't deserve happiness. Like whatever that internal self dialogue, you know, you may not be saying it out loud, but it's going on. It's going through your head. You know, my life sucks. Nobody understands me. You know, I can never get it all done. Like if you're saying these things to yourself, when we talk about mindset, you know, what you put out is what you get back. Right. It's 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 literally that simple. And if what you're putting out, you know, is crap, you're going to be getting back crap. And so the number one thing I work in mindset, it's easy to understand, but it's not easy to do. It can be really tough to kind of that process of switching and flipping and changing your mindset. It can be a difficult process. When you do it, the benefits are, you know, uh, the benefits are tremendous. Yeah, astronomical. But sometimes you really need somebody to help you Mm -hmm. get in there and figure out how to flip it, how to change it. So when your mindset is, I've got this, I'm not there yet, but it's all unfolding. I deserve everything, you know, good coming to me. If you can start shifting this mindset, um, every problem in your business has been solved. Um, you just have to be in the right mindset to receive the answer. Absolutely. And a lot, and you know, 100% of the time, that mindset trickles down into the employees. It trickles down into the oh, business. Yeah. And I don't always get out and get face to face with a lot of these businesses in their in their environment, but when I do, you can see it's it's there. Mm-hmm. Not everybody has a receptionist sitting at the front desk that's running a women's empowerment, you know, right. group in the evening. 
<laughs> you know, to get away from that negativity. Uh, yes. So it's truly, it's, it, 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 it's rampant. And then the other thing's true as well. When you shift that mindset and enhance it and have a more abundant mindset, then mm-hmm. that's definitely going to trickle down, especially when you have it written into your vision story and everybody right. knows it. If I can ask anybody and I, you know, if, if, if the owner knows the vision of the business, that's great. But if the employees don't know the vision, it's irrelevant. It doesn't make a difference. Yes. doesn't. You know, why do you even have it? You know, that's right. Absolutely. That's right. Well, thanks for sharing that because that's extremely important and absolutely right in line with my experience as well. So we're at the point where you're going to pay it forward to our abundant leaders. Ready mm-hmm. to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. So share one to three actionable steps that men of abundance can take today. Yeah, this is so great. And so um, the very first step would be, and you just mentioned it, Wally, was your vision. What What is your vision of your life? When you talk about an actionable step, I think this is the very, very first actionable step. It's not about getting busy in your day. It's not about crossing things off your list. It's about getting clear on the vision of what you want your life to look like. Your business should be part of that. Your business should not be your whole life. Um, it should be your life and your business as part of that. And if you don't know how to do it, find some resources. Um, I, I know I teach a class because a lot of people come to me and they're like, I don't know how to make a vision. And I teach a class on how to actually go through the steps to do this. But I'll give you a quick actionable step if you're not sure like, well, how do I make a vision statement of my life? One of the very first things that you can do is sit down, okay, clear all distractions and make a list of everything that you complain about in a day, right? That's easy. We know what we complain about. And so you write down, oh, I didn't get enough sleep and Um, you know, I don't have any energy and my team are idiots, like whatever it is. So you write down all the things you complain about in a day. And then you go through that list and you flip it to what you want it to be. My team is amazing. They inspire me every day. I have endless energy. I sleep so well. I'm eating a healthy diet. I'm exercising my, I have a loving relationship, like whatever it is. And if you just string those things together, that's the start of a vision statement. Like that's the quick and dirty actionable. If you don't have this, you need to have this because from the vision comes goals and from goals come action. (laughs) And so you really shouldn't be taking action until you're clear on where you want to go. And vision is the direction. This is where I want to end up. And if you're clear on where you want to end up now, when you take action each day, it's going to be getting you further faster because you're taking action in the right direction. So that was kind of a bunch of actionable steps all together. But the very, very first one comes from set aside some time. Your life is worth it to start getting clear on the direction and the outcome of where you want to be a year from now, three years from now, five years from now. Yeah, I love it. So I'm the business owner or whoever, and I say, that sounds great, Jennifer, but uh, I got a plan. What's the difference? Mm -hmm. Great. And so if you have a plan, the first thing that I would want to know is when was the last time you looked at it? I actually onboarded a new client yesterday and she's like, oh, I have a business plan. I'm like, great. When was the last time you looked at it? She said 10 years ago Mm -hmm. (laughs) when she started her business. So that's the next thing. So you have a plan. Wonderful. Um, When was the last time you looked at it? Because I would take that plan I actually have it on my nightstand, my vision. It's one page. It's not like, you know, a novel, but it's a one page picture of what I want my life and my business to look like. I put it on the nightstand and start reading it every morning. Get in alignment with where you want to go before you start taking action for the day. So it's not like this, um, I'm busy all day, but I don't really know where I'm going. When you read that vision statement, you read that plan first thing every morning, you know where you want to go. So get in alignment with it. That would be the next thing. Um, I actually read mine at night before I go to bed too, because I like to, you know, align in the morning, align at night. So we're completely aligned. And then of course, I keep a copy of it in my planner too. So if I'm sitting down planning out my day, I'm like, wait a second, let me go back and read that section. It's always like right there at my fingertips. So if you have a plan, integrate it into your life. That would be the next step. Yeah, absolutely love it. I got mine sitting right here. <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 and I, I don't even have to read it. It's just there in the area because we're enter, we're, we're focus goes, energy flows or that, you know, vice mm-hmm. versa. Um, you have to put that energy and your focus it, it, it all lines together. So absolutely beautiful. I love that. Yes. What are some rituals? You mentioned a few already, but what are some rituals that make the biggest impact in your life? Um, absolutely. So reading my vision statement on a regular basis, because it realigns me with who I am, who I want to be, you know, in my vision statement, there's a line that says, I, 
attract experiences and people in perfect alignment with my core values. And I list my core values because for me, setting that intention that all my experiences, all the people I work with, I want them to be in alignment with my core values. Um, that's really, really important to me. So that's definitely one of the rituals that I do. Um, the second thing that I do is I use, um, I use a lot of affirmations throughout my day. So if I like actually today, I'm getting ready to leave on vacation tomorrow. So today is a bit crazy. There's, I, there's a lot of things stacked up today. Day. And one of the first things that I will do is I will use a time affirmation when I have a crazy day and I catch that self-talk going, oh my God, it's going to be a grueling day or oh, how am I going to get through all this today? And I will switch that and I will switch it to, I have all the time I need to get everything done today. Um, I will switch it to, I have complete freedom over how I use my time. And I do. Um, and I'll switch that to some sort of a, more of an empowering, you know, thought so that I don't grind through my day. I move through my day with joy and ease and flow, mm -hmm. right? So I always am recommitting back to those things. It's real important, those affirmations, and to really clarify what affirmations are, because many years ago, early 90s, mm -hmm. I had this book of affirmations where I would read through it, and it would say things like, I am physically fit. I have a million dollars. I have, you know, and it's all this stuff that are literally lies. I'm literally lying to right. myself. Crap. It's a bunch yeah. of crap. And the, the whole book was just about things like this. And there's different chapters on what are you financial, physical fitness, relationships, so on and so forth. But you had it spot on. And I wanted to point that out and highlight that, that affirmations are not sitting in your garden and seeing all the weeds and going, there are no weeds, there are no weeds, there are no weeds, and hoping yeah. that they're going to go away. It doesn't work like that. It's, I'm going to put in, you know, yeah, the weeds are there. I'm going to recognize that. But I'm going to put in 15 minutes a day, and I'm going to take mm -hmm. out a section of the weeds. And I'm, that's my affirmation. I've got 15 minutes a day to clear out these, put out these fires. Right. I've got 15 minutes right. a day to handle this part of my relationship. Can you it's, that's exactly right. It can't be a lie that you're telling yourself. And if it is, you got to go broader. You got to go higher. Like I think of the airplane at 30,000 foot, you got to go further out until it's not a lie. So it's, I love gardening and it feels so good to spend 15 minutes a day pulling the weeds out of my garden, right? You've got to shift that into a place that it truly is true and it starts to feel good. And the truth is I do have complete freedom over my time. I own my own business. I can tell everybody no today if I wanted to, but I'm choosing not to. And so it just sort of, the affirmation should feel really good in your bones and it should empower you. And it's like, wait a second. And, and it just kind of shifts that mindset to get you right back into the good place that you want to be in as you move through your day. Absolutely. Wonderful. We're so in line on that. Speaking of reading, what are you, you, you were talking about reading earlier and reading your vision and stuff like that, but what other things are you reading or would you recommend that our abundant leaders read or listen to and why? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm always reading something right now. My, um, my book is story brand from Donald Miller. That's the current business book that I'm working on. And it's all about clarifying your message. It's a really great book. Um, absolutely love a lot of the concepts and stuff in it. So that's what I'm reading right now. As far as a recommendation, it, like I'm, my husband calls me the planner lady, right? So I've created this daily planner, but I created it because I couldn't find a planner that did everything I needed to do. I needed to connect on the spiritual side. I needed to have a personal life and I needed to grow my business and serve my clients. And so that would be my next recommendation is what tool are you using? Find a tool that helps you stay in the right mindset, that kind of puts you into the right place, that helps you be intentional with your time every day, that, you know, actually brings the personal and the business into it. So you're not just, you know, filling your day with business stuff and you never have enough time for yourself. Um, that would be my number one recommendation. You know, there's lots of books out there to read, but that daily tool that you're using to be in the right mindset and be intentional with your time, that's my recommendation. Find something that really works well for you. Yeah, that's very important. I tried the digital planners. I've tried digital journals. I've tried, you know, written stuff. Um, I just, and I've tried the other very diff various different journals and, and planners uh, created by people that I've followed over the years and coaches and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I find them very valuable because mm -hmm. they, they make me think of things that I wouldn't have normally thought about. And then of course, many of them have little quotes in them and stuff that I like reading through, right, uh, right. which is really fun. <laughs> but um, yeah, guys, just find what works best for you. I love that, love yeah. that advice. What do you feel holds most people back from living a life of true abundance in both their personal life and in business? 
Yeah. And we've already touched on it. It goes right back to mindset. Mm -hmm. um, if you are telling yourself a really crappy story every day, that's what you're going to be getting back. And it's so simple and so basic, but it's at the root of everything. And when I, I, when I work with clients, like they're like, but, 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 you know, I want to make more money or I want to lose weight or I want to have a better partner or whatever it is. It's all these external things. And here's the deal. The external things don't shift before you do. You have to shift when you shift, the external things will shift, but the shift has to come internally from you. You have to shift first or nothing else around you is going to shift. And that's really what I believe holds most people back is they keep waiting for the external to shift first. And that's not how it works. You have to shift internally first. And when you can start to shift internally in the way that you do that is with some of these tools we've been talking about, getting clear on your vision, um, using positive affirmations, getting into the right mindset, starting to be intentional with your time and what you're going to do that will take you closer to the vision. These are all tools that you can use to shift into that place of abundance so that you can actually start to live the life that you truly want to live. And that's to me, that's what it all comes down to. Yeah, absolutely. Change your story, change your life. Exactly. Absolutely. So what does being a woman of abundance, what does that mean to you? Gosh, um, such a great question. In some ways, it really means getting out of my own way. <laughs> <laughs> getting out of my own way. Um, you have to follow you know, own advice, right? Right, right, exactly. Allowing good things to come into my life, allowing them to come in easily with joy, um, not getting in my own way. It's so funny. I was teaching a class on goals and I was like, guys, have you ever felt like sometimes you like you have your goals by the throat and you're just like choking the crap out of them and you're just like, you're going to go, you're going to happen. You know, you're just like choking your goals. And I have found myself in that trying to control things and try to, you know, force it to go well or go in the right direction. And that is so counterproductive productive and it wastes so much energy. And I've now learned it's like, wait a second, if you really want abundance, part of it is just letting go of that control, getting out of the way, letting things unfold the way that they need to unfold and sort of just, you know, getting on the ride and, <laughs> and letting it carry you, carry you instead of trying to kind of control every step of it. So for me, that's what true abundance really is when you're like, hey, I need some help and it comes to you. And wow, you know, I really love making all this money and I love how easily it flows to me. And it does. Like that that to me is is really what it means to be a woman of abundance. Absolutely wonderful. I love that. Love that answer. So we are definitely going to have your website, jenniferdoncoaching.com linked up in the show notes. And I just noticed, oh, I was reading, not just noticed, but before we got on here, that you are actually a Profit First certified coach. We're going to talk more about that because oh, yeah. I love yeah. Profit First. Um, my the mo my the motorbike is just an amazing, amazing individual. But yes. um, yes. And I'm all about that. I'm so much about that. That's, and I really I oh. just love it. But what would you like to ensure that our abundant leaders get out of our conversation today before I let you go? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know what? Um, what you just brought up, if you're a business owner and you're not doing profit first, you absolutely should be. Yeah. Um, Mike and the book is great. Actually, um, when I left the women's group, Mike asked me, will you come in and will you um, lead my mastery group? Because he was kicking off a mastery group for profit first professionals. And I did that for him for two years. Oh. So I love Mike, love the system, use it with all my coaches. I'm sorry, with all my clients. And so that's the one thing I think that's a really valuable thing. If you've not heard Heard of profit first and you're not doing it in your business go pick it up go pick it up and start reading about it because it is I tremendously literally, valuable. i literally just got that audio i had two free audio audios uh, that i could get on audible and i got profit first and the emits mm -hmm. revisited because mike yeah. and mike mike yep. mike the motorbike mike mckellowitz yep. um he recommends um the other one and both of them had been recommended to me over the years and i just yeah. did, for whatever reason didn't get a hold of them and as i'm listening to profit first i'm like yeah oh my god this is so in line <laughs> now it's super technical and i gotta get now i gotta go buy the book because i have to see numbers i can't listen to numbers it does not right. work in my head but i totally get the thought process and regardless of using his system or not there are so many mm -hmm. other strategies that i personally use to help businesses be profitable, not just uh, one of my other coaches right. that I work with. He had this quote, and I don't know where it originated from, but it's um, 
revenue feeds your ego, profits feed your family. Oh, right? that's good. It's like Mike said, <laughs> he calls great. BS on, and I literally just posted a, um, uh, um, a LinkedIn uh, article talking about uh, are you uh, aiding and abetting the e-myth uh, type of thing. So anyway, and I talk about that, but I just absolutely love everything that he's doing with that because I cannot stand seeing a business owner who's talking about, I have 50, literally I had this conversation with this guy, $55 million yeah. in revenue but he's flat broke. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Oh my, Why? And, he, and he almost right. says it just as he says, both just as proud. I'm, you know, $55 million in revenue, but I'm just as broke as yeah. I was when I started the business four years ago. Yeah. Oh okay. my God. Why? <laughs> That's Why? how we started this conversation. Why would you be in that? Put yourself in that environment. And, that, and right. but that's normal for many business owners. They feel yeah. that that's normal yes. and it just doesn't, it just yeah. doesn't have to be. No, it absolutely doesn't. Not at all. And, um, you know, with Profit First, they he does those percentages. And yeah, it can get a tiny bit technical. Mm -hmm. So if you need help, definitely reach out and get help. Don't is isolate yourself or don't toss the system right. out the window because you didn't quite know how to implement mm -hmm. it. But yeah, I mean, there's so many ways that you can change your business. This is a lot of what I do. I use Profit First with all my clients. And there's so many ways you can change your business to be healthy and profitable. But you got to be in the right mm -hmm. mindset to get in there and fix it. Yeah. So it all kind of comes back around. Absolutely. Listen, guys, go to uh, make sure I get this right. Go to jenniferdoncoaching.com. Check out the stuff that she's got there. Listen, people ask me this, this and I'm going to bring it up right now because I know somebody's thinking, well, Wally, why the heck do you have somebody on your show that's doing the same thing that you do outside of men of abundance? Because I'm an abundant leader. I can't, I do not yeah. want to help everybody. I don't have the time for it. Right. I don't have the capacity for it. I don't, I don't want to make the time for it. I'm not Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm not working 27 hours a day. All right? Yep. Me I'm neither. Specific <laughs> people I want to work with. And you yep. may not resonate with me. That's cool. That's yeah. why I have these conversations yeah. with other amazing people because I know and trust these people that you will be in good hands. So go get yeah. the information that Jennifer has. Connect with her and see if she can help you in your life and your business. And Jennifer, I greatly appreciate your time. I want to thank Interview Valley again for making the introduction. They always know the people I like having conversations with and introducing oh, to men of abundance. Uh, so just go yeah. out and live your life of abundance and keep paying it forward. You are amazing. Oh, thank you so much, Wally. All right. Enjoy your Florida sunshine. I will indeed. It is gorgeous today, too. Well, there you have it. I told you that was going to be fun. Another amazing conversation. Now, your action step today is to go back and really just kind of take a look at your goal setting practices, your journaling, all the stuff that we talked about. Which ones resonate the best with you? Which ones can you do and stick to? You know, part of setting goals is just figuring out a way to set your goals, write them down or keep, keep yourself on track and plan ahead so that you can reach your goals. And then figure out what your next goal is going to be. Once you figure out a process, it's just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And then, of course, for you business owners out there who are looking for coaching, reach out to Jennifer, see if she's your cup of tea. And if not, then get back with me or get with her and we will make sure that you get in contact with the coach that best suits you, your personality and your business. That's extremely important because you're going to be working very closely with that individual. I know when I work with clients, I work very closely. I take it very personal. I'm sure Jennifer does as well. And it is a very personal event to work closely in somebody's life and in somebody's business. So you got to get it right. Now, go out and live your life of abundance and make sure to pay it forward. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.